Hello everyone, I'm excited today to look again at the seven spirits of God because some of you have asked me questions since we taught on it and maybe I just need to bring a little bit more clarity. Last Sunday set it up for us because as we were looking in Revelation chapter 5 when John saw the Lamb of God he saw that he had seven eyes and seven horns. That must have been quite a frightful thing but it says that those seven eyes and seven horns represent the seven spirits of God that are being sent out into the earth. Well, that makes a lot of sense because Jesus said to his disciples it was good for them if he left because then he would send the Holy Spirit. So the seven eyes of the Lamb and the seven horns of the Lamb represent the Holy Spirit being sent out to the earth. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, is the one who sends out the Holy Spirit to those who place their faith and trust in him. So that's really beautiful. Now, why does God refer to the Spirit of God as the seven spirits of God? Does it, we say that God is the three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He doesn't say he's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, 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 and God the Spirit. He doesn't ever refer to there being seven sons or seven fathers. But concerning the Holy Spirit, he says that they are described as the seven spirits of God. I believe that that is a reference to the fact that seven is the number that is a reference to God. It's the number of deity. It's the number of perfection and of completeness because only God is perfect and complete. The Holy Spirit is described as the seven spirits of God and I love that because the idea is this, is that He is the one that's sent out to the earth. In other words, he has, he has uh, made himself known in all different parts of the earth. So we, that gives this idea of the, a, a multitude, multitude spirits as far as our understanding. But there's only one Holy Spirit and he is the perfect one. But he's all over the earth. He can cover everything. So I think that's a beautiful reference. But a lot of people understand that it refers back to Isaiah chapter 11. Verses 1 through 3. So let's expand on that a little bit again. We did look at it because when we talked about the church of Sardis in Revelation 3, 1, again we saw the seven spirits of God. Let me read Isaiah 11, 1 to 3. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. There's going to shoot that comes out of that root. It's referring to the Messiah. And a branch from his roots will bear fruit. Beautiful picture of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Messiah. As the Spirit of the Lord, and then it has a comma, and it says, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So he's called the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, Spirit of counsel, Spirit of might, Spirit of knowledge, and the Spirit of the Lord. And it says this, And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes sees, nor make decisions by what his ears hear. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The very Spirit of God would rest upon the Messiah, and that's the very same Spirit of God that rests upon the church. So what do I understand? First off, that God's going to give me a spirit, but it's not an angelic spirit. It's the very Spirit of God, the first person of the Trinity. The second spirit I will receive is a spirit of wisdom. Let's remind ourselves of that. Wisdom is knowledge that is gained by having many experiences in life. The natural ability to understand things that most other people cannot understand. They might have information, but they don't know how to practice it. You and I can ask the Lord, Lord, just give me wisdom. Help me to know how to walk through life. Spirit of the Lord, spirit of wonder, spirit of understanding. Some of you right now are saying, Lord, help me to understand the book of Revelation. The Lord can give you the Holy Spirit so that you can understand. You don't need an education. Hey, John was a fisherman. Look at the wisdom that he gave, the revelation, the understanding. Then he, the, you can have the spirit of counsel, where Jesus is your counselor. He tells you how to do life. Go left now. Go right. I'm leading you. And then the spirit of the counselor in you makes you a better counselor to others who need help. The spirit of, of um, strength, it says. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I don't just have wisdom to know what to do. I don't just have counsel and know where to go, but God strengthens me to do it. Whether I'm young or old, the Bible says the spirit that raised Christ from the dead can also strengthen your body. Isn't that amazing? Spiritual, physical strength from the Lord. 
Ultimately, that's expressed at the resurrection when the dead body is made alive. Then finally, we have the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You're just saying, God, it's so hard for me to remember things. It's so hard. I, I hear it and I get it and then I lose it. Ask the Lord for the spirit of knowledge. And then finally is the spirit of the fear of the Lord, where inside of you comes such a reverence, such an awe and such a respect that you want to do what he asks you to do. You want to obey him. You want to know him more. You want to understand him. Did you know that the Lord, you say to me, I wish I didn't fall so easily. Well, ask the Lord, God, give me the, 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 the spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is a reverence and awe for you so that in everything that I do, all I want to do is is honor you and bless you. So there's one Holy Spirit, but in, in the Isaiah chapter 11, seven, seven characteristics and demonstrations of his activity in your life. That's it. God bless you all. Thank you.